Hello friends, in this video I will provide six types of evangelism so you can see different approaches which all contribute to expanding the kingdom and spreading the good news. The real key to success in evangelism begins with knowing what style God has bestowed on you. Each is unique, each is precious, each is of immense value in spreading the message. I will provide statements that will help you identify and discover your preferred method along with a biblical example of each style. Additionally, I will point out major blind spots and suggestions for further development. God has blessed each of us with differing abilities, but his expectation and desire is the same, win people to Christ so they can become his followers. The following evangelism styles were adapted from the book Becoming a Contagious Christian by Mark Middleberg, Lee Strobel, and Bill Hybels. Keep in mind that you may identify with more than one. So let's get started. The first style of evangelism is confrontational or direct. If you identify with these statements, you likely have a direct style of evangelism. One, in conversations, I like to approach topics directly without beating around the bush. Two, I don't shy away from challenging someone when it seems necessary. Or three, I do not have a problem confronting my friends with the truth, even if it strains their relationship. Or four, I sometimes get in trouble for lacking gentleness and sensitivity in the way I interact with others. The biblical example that I have is from Acts 2. The apostle Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. He didn't beat around the bush. He got right to the point. It says that they were cut to the heart in Acts 2.37. He was direct in his preaching, blunt and in your face. He told the Jews assembled that day that they had murdered their Messiah. And if they wanted to avoid the wrath of God, they had better repent. In that day, 3,000 responded. Yes, under the right circumstances, this can be the most effective approach. Jesus' evangelism style centered primarily around this type. See Matthew 4.17. The major blind spot for this style is sometimes people are approached too strongly that you can come across as combative. They may have the mentality of, I am right and you are wrong, seeking to convert people in a forceful way. So some suggestions for development. Allow the Holy Spirit to restrain your desire to come on strong in every situation. Be sure to ask for God's wisdom so you will appropriately be sensitive and tactful. Attempt to strike the right balance between boldness and gentleness. Another suggestion is there are times when the message needs to hit right between the eyes in order to get their attention. There are indeed times when it's counterproductive to beat around the bush with certain people and situations. Another suggestion is that there are times you will need to listen first what others have to say before telling them what you think they need to hear. Also, avoid judging others who approach evangelism with a different style that aren't as direct. And last, this is a suggestion for all the styles. Team up with friends who have other styles that may be better matched to the personality of the person you hope to reach. The next type of evangelism is intellectual. If you identify with these statements, you likely have an intellectual style of evangelism. I have a hard time getting out of a bookstore without buying a bunch of new books that may help me defend my faith. Two, I become consumed in challenging certain positions and logic which seek to undermine the Lordship of Christ or question God's character. Or three, I strive to explain and understand difficult passages or topics in the scriptures which keep people confused or stuck. The biblical example comes from Acts 17 verses 16 through 31. The Apostle Paul knew how to stand toe to toe, not only with the Jews, but with the best philosophers of his day. Indeed, he even won some to Christ. In this section, he offers logical reasons to believe in the invisible God. While in the city of Athens, Paul was reasoning in the synagogue with the Jews and the God-fearing Gentiles, and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be present. 
and that's in verse 17. He engaged the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers of the day, and he quoted from their own poets and respected writers. Major blind spots. Some within the, this category are, are perceived as cold, aloof, insensitive, and impersonal. Feelings have lesser importance than the intellect. Also, sometimes they can be so focused on winning the debate that they lose sight of the human side of relationships. Some suggestions for development. Develop your relational side. Talk to people about everyday events and what is happening in their life and yours. Engage not only the mind, but also the heart of people. Avoid doing all your preparation in an academic vacuum. Get out and talk to other people about their perspectives and beliefs. Try your arguments and answers out on real people to see how they respond. Avoid getting stuck on academic points, arguments, and evidence. Use these mainly to clear the way back to the central gospel message. And lastly, avoid being argumentative. This will only raise a wall, turning the conversation into a competition. We read in uh, 1 Peter 3.15, it says that we are to possess gentleness and respect. Next is the testimonial style. If you identify with these statements, you likely have a testimonial style of evangelism. One, I can't help but speak out of my personal background or experience in order to make a point. Two, I'm comfortable with being vulnerable about my personal life, including not only the ups, but downs as well. Three, I share my mistakes and struggles with others when it might assist them in considering solutions that could help them. I'm a good storyteller and seem to be able to hold others' interest when I share about myself. And five, I'm still amazed at how God has worked in my life, and I would like others to know about the, the same possibilities for them. Biblical example comes from John 9. Jesus and his disciples came upon a, a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he would be born blind? That's in verse 2. That's an interesting question. Jesus doesn't even waste time challenging this idea, but goes directly into declaring that what is about to occur is to glorify God. Jesus healed him, and the news of the miracle spread rapidly. This man was brought before the religious leaders, and they questioned him repeatedly. He stuck to his story, however, and gave testimony to the divine healing power of this Jesus. The leaders did not like what they were hearing, but he definitely had their attention. His testimony was riveting, and yet, at the end of the day, he was cast from the synagogue. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess him to be the Messiah, he should be put out of the synagogue. And we read that in verse 22. Blind spot. Sometimes you tell your story, but your focus is on yourself and not enough on what God did in your life. So some suggestions for development are keep Christ and the gospel message as a centerpiece of your story. This is an account of how he changed your life. Those with this evangelistic style may be perceived as theologically shallow, so Make sure there is biblical truth and substance in your story. Be sure to relate your experience to the life of the listener. This requires first hearing enough about their story so you can connect it with yours. And last, practice so you'll be able to tell your story without hesitation. Check out Mark chapter 5, verses 19 through 20, this is another example when the exercise man from the garrisons went home and told his friends how much Jesus had done for him. We now move to the next style, which is relational. If you identify with these statements, you likely have a relational style of evangelism. One, I seek to develop strong relationship with others, and once I have earned the right, I share the message. Two, I am considered a people person who places a high value on friendship. Three, 
I go out of my way to show interest in the lives of others, getting involved in their lives in meaningful ways. Four, I don't have an issue delving into personal life issues. Five, I enjoy long and deep talks with friends. And six, I'm good at connecting people I just met with my own network. Biblical example comes from Luke chapter 5, verses 27 through 29. Levi the tax collector, after having been called to leave his booth and follow Jesus, got up and left everything and followed him. After this, Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. This devoted follower wanted to share his newfound faith with as many people as possible, so he hosted a large party for the Lord at his home, inviting all his friends and loved ones. Blind spot. Sometimes you put the friendship over the gospel. As a result, you never get around to sharing the message because you're afraid to damage the friendship, when in reality, the friendship is not really at risk at all. Some suggestions for development. Beware of valuing friendship over truth. At some point, you will have to be more direct in sharing the gospel, at which time the relationship will be tested. Recognize that if you really care about someone, Bringing them to the knowledge of Christ as Lord and Savior is the greatest expression of love. Also, be patient. This style tends to work more gradually than others. Look and pray for opportunities to turn conversations toward spiritual matters. Continually create a, and plan opportunities to interact with new people through social events, sports, and concerts. This will put you in a position where your style can flourish. And last, practice telling the gospel message so you will be prepared when the opportunity arises. You don't want to be fumbling during an open door. The next is the invitational style. If you identify with these statements, you likely have an invitational style of evangelism. One, I enjoy adding or including new people and activities I'm involved in. Or two, I invite to bring people together who otherwise may have not met. Or three, it is not unusual for me to attend special events or concerts and bring along a car full of people. Or four, I am always looking for a good match between the needs and interests of my friends and various books, classes, retreats, and programs that they would enjoy or benefit from. The biblical example I have is the story of the Samaritan woman at the well in John 4 whom Jesus encountered at Jacob's well just outside the village of Sychar. Although Jews did not normally relate well to Samaritans, we see that in verse 9, and it was not considered fitting for a woman to converse with a man in an unsupervised setting, yet these two struck up a rather intimate conversation. When the Samaritan woman realized that the one to whom she was speaking was someone quite special, she went back into the village and said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? So they came out of the town and made their way toward him. And we read that in verses 28 through 30. Later, we are informed that many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. We read that in verse 39. We may not all be equipped to close the deal evangelistically, but most can at least invite others to come and see. Blind spot. Sometimes you pass the buck of sharing the gospel. Instead of taking advantage of clear and open opportunities, you leave it to others to present the gospel. Some suggestions for developing this style is, in addition to inviting, capitalize on clear opportunities to share about your faith and how Christ has influenced your own life. Also, another suggestion is prayerfully consider where you invite people. Make sure you are sending an accurate message about where you stand on spiritual matters. For example, inviting someone to a bar or heavy metal concert or other non-edifying venue may cause you and them to go backwards 
instead of moving forward in a, in a relationship with Christ. Also, do not get discouraged if people refuse your invitation. Their refusal could be an opportunity for a spiritual conversation. The question of why they are not interested in, in a particular event could surface, giving a better idea of where they stand spiritually. Also, their no today may be a yes tomorrow. And we come to the last suggestion. Set yourself up for success. Be sure they have all the necessary details about the event. And don't forget to send a reminder as the day approaches. Whenever appropriate, Offer to pick them up and do something together before or after the event. Now we proceed to the last one, which is the serving style. If you identify with these statements, you likely have a serving style of evangelism. One, I see opportunities to serve that others often overlook. Two, I find fulfillment in supporting others often behind the scenes. Three, I would rather show love and care through actions than through words. Four, I have found that my service opens up doors for meaningful conversations. Five, I think that the gospel can be communicated through acts of kindness. Six, while others talk, I tend to be more action-oriented, looking to get things done. Seven, I connect with people by working alongside them on a task. And then finally, eight, I tend to be more practical and action-oriented than philosophical and idea-oriented. The biblical example I have is from Jesus himself, who showed the greatest act of love and service when he said in Matthew 20, 28, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. We follow his example and service and give our lives to Christ and to the service of the people he has called us to reach. When the two brothers, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were making unreasonable demands, Jesus exhorted them and said that whoever desires to be great among you, let him be your servant. And we read that in Matthew 20, 26. Blind spot. Sometimes you just do the actions, the deeds, without verbalizing the gospel with words. Also, you can get so focused on doing that you're not present to the people around you. Some suggestions for development. Actions are no substitute for words. In Romans 10, 14, we read that Paul says that we must verbally tell people about Christ. You can do this by pointing to him as a central motivation for your acts of service. Also, be careful not to overextend your self-serving, causing you to neglect areas of your life. And finally, pray for wisdom. So you will know where to invest your efforts in ways that please God. Just remember the story of Mary and Martha in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. In conclusion, uh, we certainly don't have to be alike in our evangelistic approaches, nor should we suggest one way is inferior or superior to another. May we each use the gifts that we have been given and become skilled fishers of men. A suggestion for all the styles is to, is to be sure to team up with friends who have other styles that may be better matched to the personality of the person you hope to reach. Hello, friends. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to continue to get updates, please subscribe to this channel. Also, if you would be interested in taking a missional leadership course, you can visit our social media outlets, either Facebook or our website at senttotheworld.org. God bless.